Welcome to this week's vlog. I'm out, I'm out about 150 kilometers from Brisbane, out past Cunningham's Gap, um, way out on the way towards Warwick. As you can see, it's night time. Time's about midnight, and I've come out specifically for astrophotography tonight. There's no moon, no clouds, and just a beautiful, starry night. Cold, but, but beautiful starry night. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, literally quite remote. Um, I'm at the side of the road. I'm driving around looking for compositions, which at night's quite difficult, but what I'm looking for, and you can't quite see behind me, but I'm looking for these beautiful gum trees that, that Australia has. Now it's these gum trees that they have these beautiful shapes and textures to them and what I'm trying to do is capture the Milky Way behind them um, and have the gum tree tell a bit of a story as well um, about its spot in the landscape. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to take you through how I do astrophotography. I think it's quite simple, it's quite basic, it's quite easy. Um, anyone with a DSLR should be able to manage it these days, so yeah. I've come out with my D500. And at the moment, I've got my um, Nikon 17-55 2.8mm sitting on the front. Astrophotography, it's incredibly important you have a sturdy tripod. Without the tripod, it's useless. DSLR with um, capabilities of going up to 3200 ISO quite nicely, um, so you don't get a lot of noise, um, is, is critical as well. Higher ISOs are better. Okay, but 3200 is passable. You'll get you'll get decent shots with 3200 ISO. So I use a cable release. Um, I do that because I don't want any camera shake at all when I take the shot photos. Camera settings. It's it's going to be up to um, what lens you use, and it's going to be um, dependent on um, yeah, essentially just what lens you use and trial and error from there. What I find because um, Camera settings is all about setting the, the ISO um, to as high as you can go, um, but still at the same time, not introduce a lot of noise into the image. Um, so there's a happy medium there. I can go up far higher than 3200 ISO, but I, I add a lot more noise than I want in the image. Speed, my shutter speed is all about how fast I can have the shutter open, or how long I can have the shutter open for, before I capture the movement of the uh, the stars. I want them nice and solid. I don't want them um, uh, blurry. So it's about that happy medium there again, because the stars are always moving, and you know the the wider angle, more the wider the um, your field of view, the less they look like they're moving. So you can hold it open for longer. I find I can get away with 25 seconds here on my uh, on my 17 to 55 at 17 mil. Any longer than that, and I get some star trails happening, I get some movement, and the clouds, the stars just don't look nice. As for f-stop, it's as wide open as you can get it. You're trying to get as much light into the camera as you possibly can. All right, it's that simple. Um, the more light you can put in, the more sensitive you, you can have your um, um, sensor to light the better the image, or the, the more it'll capture, and essentially the better the image. What I'm also doing, okay, so that's that shot here. Anyway, what I'm also doing with this particular tree is I have my light behind me and I'm painting the tree with light. So what I'm doing is I'm taking two images and I'm gonna put them together in post um, afterwards. I'm taking one image in my composition and the tree is the strong part of the composition and I've got the Milky Way above it. Um, I'm taking one image solely for the Milky Way. The second image I'm doing is still with the same shutter speed, same everything else. I'm dropping my ISO down to ISO 100. And then I'm grabbing this light that's, that's illuminating me at the moment. And I'm just painting the tree with the light. Um, and what I'm trying to do is I don't want harsh light on it to make it look like it's really been lit right up um, with a harsh light like this. What I'm trying to do is as I move the light around it, is I want a bit of light and shadow play within the tree itself. So I don't want it, it's not going to be subtle. We know that it's a light and it's pitch black. 
but I don't want it to look like it's just been fired off with a flash. What I'm trying to do is get the light to wrap around, so I'm moving the light where I want it constantly, painting it over, um, holding it in one position, trying not to get too much in the, in the grass area, so it's just in the tree itself. All right, um, I'll move on now. I've taken the shots, I'll move on now. I'll move on to another location. Hopefully it's gonna be a little less rural. If it is, what I'll do is I'll have you guys um, with me as I set up my um, my shot, okay? And I'll show you exactly how I compose my image, how I um, uh, get my focus, because focus is crucial, especially when you're doing it at night like this, and how I um, um, essentially, yeah, capture my images, all right? I'll, I'll pack this up now, and we'll move on to the next location. Okay, so here's my second location. Completely different style of location than the last one. I got the Cunningham Highway literally just there. You're gonna hear trucks driving past. I'm in a, a, a side road. You have to be very careful that cars do not, don't come driving down this way and take me out. I have over behind me, I have lights from a, I think it's like a, a farm or a fruit packing plant or something like that. And then directly over my shoulder here, the lights from Aratula. Okay, so completely different, not remote anymore. Um, I think we're about one o'clock in the morning now. Now the shot that I'm thinking of here, and I, I am cheating a little bit. Last time I was out here, I did get a very similar shot. Um, and it, it sort of half worked. Um, that was when I was struggling with batteries for my camera as well, so uh, I'd come out one night, um, I thought I had two fully charged batteries. Turns out that I had one quarter charged battery and that was it. Yeah, you can hear the trucks now as they're going past, I think. So I've got the roadway and what my shot's gonna be is I've got directly above, I've got the, uh, the Milky Way. Literally is a band across here. And I have the roadway here and it comes arcing around here. So behind me and arcing around. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first of all, take, take my shot. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of light pollution from over here and that, or the lights from over behind me here. That's gonna mean that my foreground down here is gonna be um, not as dark as what I'd like it to be, but it's gonna be a mute point because what I'm going to then do is, after I've taken my shot for the Milky Way, I'm actually going to drop the ISO right down, hold, um, drop my speed down a little bit, my shutter speed down a little bit, so not 25 seconds. I'm probably going to bring it to about 15 seconds. But then I'm going to drive my car past. I'm going to get the light trails in it. And that's going to actually take care of my entire foreground for me. So that'll be the foreground interest, me driving my car through there. Um, that'll take out the light pollution I'll get from. Oops! That'll take out the light pollution that I'll get from these lights over here, um, and it'll also give me a really nice foreground interest, something to draw, bring myself in, into the frame to see the, the Milky Way. Hopefully, it'll work. My only concern is it'll possibly because the ar road arcs around to the left, the the light trails may take you out of the frame. That is my only concern and I and if it does I just got to recompose it and see whether or not I can get them going straight into the frame instead but still you'll be part of the journey let's begin my tripod I do feel as though this shot is going to be probably best if I take the shot down low okay but I'm going to start it up here and we'll see how I go um, I'll take the few test shots first in terms of where the Milky Way is and so on. Though it's not critical that I get this dead level, I do like to get the tripod level. Because I'm not going to be doing a pano or anything else like that. And, I can, and I've got a ball head on top and I will be able to, to, to level it on the ball head. But I'm one of these people that believe that... Um, the more I can, I can look after my gear, so the more I can 
level up the legs. It'll take less pressure off the ball because the ball won't be at, a, at, the, at, a, at odd angles. It should put the pressures directly all the way through the tripod. And I tend to look after my gear that way. I don't know if that's, if that's a, the, the case, if that's true or not, but it's certainly something that I believe anyway. And hey, look, um, tripods tend to last me a, long, a lifetime at the moment. The tripod which this camera's on is my original tripod that I bought 25, 25 years ago, close to 30 years ago, and it's still working. So I've got a bubble on the tripod here, and I'm just gonna level up these legs. And it's that simple. I'll go grab the camera now. I'm assuming it's gonna be my 17 to 55. I do have an 11 to 16 there as well. I may break that out depending on the, um, uh, how much Milky Way I want in it too. So anyway, let me go grab that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start out with the Tequina on here, the 16, to, or so the 11 to 16. Just gonna give it a go, see how it goes. I want it in portrait mode. So that's it this way. This way is landscape, this way is portrait. So I want it in portrait mode. Okay, I just wanna, I like the idea of, of, of the way it would look that way um, and the tallness of my car as it drives through. Anyway, let's get this set up and I'll run you through how I do things. Once again, you can see cable release or remote release attached to the camera. I think it's highly cru critical or highly crucial that I have that. And I will say too, if you're doing landscape photography, invest in an L bracket. It has just completely revolutionized my, my photography. It's one of those tools that when you get and you start to use, you just don't, under, you don't understand how valuable it is until you start using it. When you do, you can't do without it. That L bracket has just been, it's been the best money I've ever spent on photography, without a doubt. Easily the best tool I've ever used. So the next thing I do, is my camera goes in live mode. I need to get this, this composition set up and the, the camera goes in live mode now. And I can see straight away, at this height, my foreground is literally half of my image here which in astrophotography we don't want. So I know I'm gonna to have to drop this down straight away. And I'm gonna to have to have it very close to, the, to the, um, the road. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is the great thing about these tripods, is this center pole, it's a three-legged thing. These center poles come out and they come out really well, really easy. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about focus or anything else like that. It's still gonna be focused in infinity from my, my last place. I will reset the focus, but what I'm gonna do now is just do a really quick test shot to see where the Milky Way is. So you have to turn that light off and I'll turn you guys off. When you come back on, I'll have taken my shot and I'll explain what I've got, had to go through. Okay, so what I can say right now is this is where it shows that it really does pay to take your test shots. So I'd envisage a shot in portrait mode. Doesn't quite work. Cuts off too much of the Milky Way. I get the major part, the galactic core in it, but it's still, it's just, a, it, it doesn't look pleasing. It's not well balanced. So I popped it straight into landscape. Yes, it's not level, it's not in focus, it's nothing like that. ISO's turned up. It looks terrible in terms of a quality. 
but it's to get the basis of my um, composition right. And I tell you what, I really like it. Okay, it, it, I've got a lot of roadway, so there's a lot of a lot of foreground interest still there. When I put the um, the car through it, it should come up really nice. The stars, like I get a lot of the Milky Way going across the top of my um, my image, and I think it looks stunning. And together, this image should come together really, really well. The next thing I'm going to do is going to level the tripod. No, sorry, my camera off because the tripod is level. Then I'm going to um, then I'm going to go through focusing, and I'll run you through that in a second. Let me get this tripod leveled off or the camera leveled off, and get the image um, set up now how I want it. Um, so work in the composition a little bit more, making sure the lines are where I want them to be of the road. And then the next thing then is I'll take you through how I, uh, how I focus my shot. Okay, so I'm all set up and I'm ready to go. How do I focus? Well, first of all, we know the settings that I need. We just went through that before at the other location. We know my ISO's at about 3200. We know my shutter speed is sitting at um, 25 seconds. Are you turning in? Nope. Um, we know my ISO is sitting at um, 3200 and we also know my aperture is sitting at 2.8 because it's the widest open that I can get on this particular camera or this particular lens. Focusing is the next crucial part. Now I've got a good stable tripod, the legs are quite wide, good stable um, uh, grounding to it, it shouldn't move. I'm using a shutter release so again, eliminate movement, and I'm using mirror lock up, which means when I press the shutter release, the mirror locks up for a second before the shutter opens. So eliminating as much shake as I possibly can. And I'm being really mindful not to walk on it, not to hit it. I've done that in the past as well. So I'm being really mindful of that. Focusing is the next part, and it can be tricky. So there's all sorts of things you can do. I've heard some people saying focus to infinity and lock it off. I've heard other people say that um, um, arrive at your, land, at your destination, your location um, really early while it's still light. Get the focusing that way and then um, once you've got the focus, lock it off there. Generally when I come out and shoot, I've got kids and I like to help my wife out at night. I don't just you know sort of dump her with the kids and run off to do my photography so I want to make sure the kids are in bed before I go out because I want to be there for them so when I come out and shoot I don't have the luxury of being able to do pretty much any of that so I have to devise a different way of focusing so what I do is obviously the camera's in live view I zoom in on the zoom buttons on the on live view so not on my not on the zoom on my on my lens but on the actual back of the camera so so I, I zoom in on that one and I draw and I zoom into some of the brightest stars of the sky once I'm in there I take it out of focus straight away to make it really blurry a reason for that is when it's really blurry it cuts out some of the so all you see is the brightest star in the sky you don't see the other little stars around it that's perfect then I slowly but surely bring it back into focus now I'll look at the the, um, the the brightest star in the sky and I'll try and make it as small as I possibly can okay which is almost all the way out to infinity now with this particular lens it's to infinity and back slightly what you notice is when you get there, you get all the way to the smallest part, then all of a sudden the little stars around it pop. When you're at that stage, that's when you know it's in focus. I then take a test shot, obviously, and zoom in and just double check, always double check, but it's never been wrong. Not, not for me at this point in time. So I've been really lucky like that, and it's the same here. So I've took my test shot, zoomed in, it's all in focus. Now then, so now that we've got all those settings, I'm gonna turn this light off, I'm gonna take the shot, and then when I come back on, we're gonna talk through how I'm going to time my driving through for my foreground, okay? And how I'm gonna get my foreground interest in there and my light trails going through. So we're about to do that. So let me turn this light off, let me take this shot. I'll be back on in a sec. Okay, so that's the shot taken. Next, foreground. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refocus the camera. <laughs> Every time a car drives past here they slow down. I always feel as though they're about to turn in, which is why every now and again I'm stopping and looking up here, because if they do turn, I'm gonna have to make sure that, first of all, I turn this camera, this light off the road so I don't blind anybody. Um, and look, don't worry, this is not a main road. It's, it's on the way to someone's property, okay? It's not on a main road. I'm not at risk of being run over. It's like, I've been here over an hour and no car has come down at this point in time. I'm incredibly lucky like that. And I'm off the road even if a car does come down. But I still have to be mindful that if a car does come through, I don't want to blind them with this light and I want to make sure my photography here is protected. So I would just literally turn that light away and let them drive past and then I'd be right again. So anyway, back to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re refocus my image okay and i'm going to focus on the foreground a little bit more because i now want that in, sh in um, focus once i'm there okay what i'm then going to do is i'm going to turn my my shutter speed to about 15 seconds and i think 15 is enough Okay, this is experimental, experimental here. I don't know if it is going to be enough, simply. Um, I'm just going to attempt it. I'm going to have a look and take the shot and I'm going to have a look and then I'm going to assess from there. But I think 15 seconds should be enough of a light for trial for what I'm after. I'm then going to turn the ISO down. I'm going to take it down to ISO 100. The base ISO of this. And I'm going to turn my um, timer on as well because I can't take the shot and drive at the same time. So I'm gonna have to take the shot. So I'm gonna have to hit that, hit the um, uh, cable release, run to my car, and then start the drive that direction. And hopefully that all times nicely. Now, there will be a hint on the back of the camera. I will see the live view screen go black. That's when I know it's it's taken and I know of my drive time from there. So I'm gonna try drive a, start a little bit further back from it, watch my screen once that's happened, start my drive. When I'm just in front of the camera, that's when I'm gonna flick my lights on properly as I drive, because I don't also want the um, my headlights shining into the back of my camera and altering, you know, getting flare or anything else like that. It shouldn't happen. It has happened to me in the past though, so it's just what you learn. So once those headlights get past, that's when I'll flick them on. I'll have my parkers on so I can see where I'm driving and you'll be able to pick up the light trails from there. But hopefully, I'll, go, I'll run through that now. Hopefully the next shot you'll see will be of me driving through and then I'll put the image up for you and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I just looked and it worked, but not quite as I'd hoped. So I'm gonna give it another go. Um, this time I'm gonna come out a little bit further in the road. So I stayed in that left-hand lane. I'm gonna come out a little bit further, okay? Cause I do want the light trails to be quite nice and close to the, to the camera as it goes around. So I'm gonna try it again. Here we go again. Okay, so that worked a treat. Um, an absolute treat. I've got the beautiful 
deep red of my tail lights going through the image uh, from the side. Hopefully when, when I put that with the Milky Way above it, it draws you in and follows the line of the Milky Way around. So that's what I'm hoping. Um, we'll see. So the idea of the image is you're going to follow the lights trails in. It should meet somewhere up there or take you to the left hand side of the image, which should be where the milk part of the Milky Way is and then you should come back across the top and have a look at the top of the Milky Way. Either way it should take your eyes in and around the image and hold you in there instead of taking you out to the left hand side of the frame and, and hopefully see you see it gone. So thank you. It's going to be. It was a hard vlog. This one. Um, it's li literally just me talking to the camera and nothing else. So it is a hard one. Uh, hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks on how to do astrophotography. Apart from the driving in the car, it's not that difficult. It's actually quite easy. I think it's one of the easiest forms of photography. So get out there, get amongst it, do it, do it. Whatever camera you've got, give it a go. Okay. The rewards are amazing. And it is so, so simple, really simple. I have t done for um, astrophotography with a kit lens before too. It works, okay? It really does work. Um, most of astrophotography is done in the dark room, so to speak, done in the light room. All right, so most of astrophotography and the key of getting those beautiful astro images is all about once you've got this part down right it's all about clever processing and that's it if you want to know about post processing especially with regards to astrophotography nick page is a really good one all right i rec highly recommend checking him out um so yeah so i'd really recommend checking him out there's a few others out there as well that do it but the key to good astrophotography is the post-processing. This part is the simple part, okay? Apart from lining up and driving your car through. All right, guys, look, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you for being patient too. I did try to vlog last week. I went to uh, Point Cartwright, uh, which is close to myself. There's a, play, uh, there's a dolphin rock up there, it's called. It's a rock that comes out of the ocean. It looks like a dolphin that's breaching or, or jumping. It looks stunning. But I got completely wiped out by a wave, almost ruined two cameras in the process. So um, I got some good images out of it, I just couldn't vlog. So I've come out tonight um, to put this together to show you guys. I wanted to do astrophotography for a while and put together another vlog for, for astrophotography for a while. Um, but guys, look, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this content, please support me and subscribe. Um, and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified of updates. Guys, see you next week.